Hey, what's up everybody? Welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, my name is Kyle. I make videos about cameras, photography, and all that good stuff. Today we are going to review the Per Gear 10 millimeter F8 manual pancake lens. This is definitely a strange one, but it's been a lot of fun taking a look at this lens. If I could sum it up in three words, I would say it's cheap, well-made, and weird. So first off, yes, Pergear sent me this lens, but as with all of my reviews, I can say what I want because this is my channel and that's how I roll. So this is the box you get. It's like a clear kind of case for it. It's actually kind of nice that they provided this because when you open it up, it has the manual and then this little kind of uh, soft cushiony area where the lens sit. The manual is pretty self-explanatory. It tells you how to install the lens or uninstall the lens from the camera. And then it gives you a couple specs, which I will read off really quickly. The focal length is 10 millimeters. That is it. That's all you get. It doesn't go in, it doesn't go out. It is a fixed focal length. The maximum aperture is F8, which is really the only aperture of this lens. You can't change the aperture at all. So there's no going to F16 or nothing below F8. The closest focusing distance is 0.3 meters or it's around 0.98 feet. And you change that to infinity by using a lever on the lens. So this is really the only moving part of the lens. And when you use the lever, you can see the a little piece of the lens stick out a little bit and then retract when you use the lever. I think this is a really cool, unique way for a lens like this to work. Um, you definitely wouldn't have a focus ring or an aperture ring on it because of the compact size. It is a true pancake lens. And the lever is just a cool way to add a feature on there that lets you focus on close up objects or, you know, do infinity focus, which is great. Then it lists the optical design of the lens is five elements in four groups. If you're into that sort of thing, the lens is designed for APS-C cameras like the Sony a6000 or 6100. And just for reference, all of the example footage and photos in this video are on the Sony a6000. The focus method is manual, which again, like I said earlier, there is no focus ring. It's just the lever. And then the lens mount, they make this lens for multiple lens mounts. I'll put that in the description somewhere. And then the weight of this lens is about 70 grams. So this thing is super light. The lens body is all metal, uh, comes with your standard plastic rear lens cap and NEX one. Um, and then the lens cap itself is metal and it just sits on like so. Um, it has a little kind of felt area around the inner ring of it. And then it just goes onto the lens nice and snug like. So it's this tiny, tiny little package regardless of whichever way you look at it. So before I talk about like my experience with this and who this lens is for, I wanna show you guys some example photos. So cue a little photo montage and I will mark in somewhere on the screen if it's an edited photo or if it's a straight out of camera photo. So hopefully you guys enjoy these. So hopefully you guys enjoyed those photos. I'm gonna show you guys some video in a little bit, but let's talk about the image quality and just what this lens is all about. So this lens is definitely just all about that wide 
aspect. It's about also the physical part of having a small profile and not, you know, encumbering the photographer when out and about. Here is a size comparison between the Per Gear uh, 10 millimeter, the Sigma 16 millimeter, and then something like the Sony kit lens. Um, and then I'll also throw on the screen a comparison between the Sony 16 millimeter F2.8 pancake lens and then the Per Gear 10 millimeter lens and just you can clearly see that this lens is maybe the smallest lens out there for a Sony camera. I have no idea if that's true or not, but it sure seems like it. And it also is kind of like a landscape lens, uh, which is really nice. And it can work as, you know, sort of like a street photography lens too, because you have the option to focus up close. You can also do infinity focus. You can get perspectives where you're right up on top of something and still got a lot in view. It's just, it's a really unique lens. The overall quality of the images and stuff like that, it takes a little finessing in editing. Of course, in editing programs, you can copy settings of one photo per se, like say if you fixed the uh, fisheye of the photo or you fixed the vignetting and then you copied those settings and then pasted it to another photo, um, say you can do this in Lightroom, for example, it makes editing a breeze. You can just kind of tweak the settings of one photo. And then if it's a similar lighting condition, you can then paste those settings to a bunch of photos. So it's not too much of a hassle, but for somebody who doesn't want to do anything that I just said, this lens is not for you. As far as like just the image quality and stuff like that, I really like it, especially for this price. It's an, a sub hundred dollar lens. It's super light. It's actually pretty fun to walk around with. It's almost like your camera doesn't even have a lens on it because of how small and lightweight it is. As for vlogging, um, I saw that Camera Conspiracies, which is another YouTube channel about lenses and cameras and things like that. If you haven't checked him out, please do. He makes hilarious and also educational content about cameras and things. He reviewed this lens in terms of vlogging and the wide aspect you can get. He used it on a full frame camera, so it was interesting to see that whereas I'm doing a review on an APS-C camera and mainly geared towards photo, he's doing it more about video and a full frame camera. So I will link his video review of this lens down below. Definitely check that out. You can definitely use this lens for vlogging, especially in daylight scenarios, because again, it only is an F8 lens. So low light, you can pretty much forget it unless your camera can you know, pump the ISO up to crazy levels and not be super noisy. Otherwise, you know, it's strictly like a daytime, very, very wide lens for vlogging, which may work for you or it may not work for you. I think something like this is really fun. Uh, it definitely shouldn't be an expensive type of lens and it's not. And yeah, I think for the money, for what it does, it's really fun and a great value. But again, just want to mention, you know, if you're not into editing your photos, maybe looking at a lens correction or, you know, fixing a vignette and things like that, maybe this isn't the lens for you. Or if you're cool with those imperfections with a fisheye type lens, then maybe you could pick it up. But just wanted to have those disclaimers that if you want a perfectly flat image and things like that, you're going to have to edit some of these photos. If you're somebody who is craving wider than the kit lens, but you don't have, you know, hundreds of dollars to say get the Sigma 16 millimeter or even the pancake lenses that Sony offers, this is a really cool, unique, fun, cheap option to get into super wide lenses. Um, it's under a hundred bucks. I think it's around 70 ish dollars on Amazon right now. It's a really cheap way to get into wide. All right, guys, that about wraps it up on the review for the 10 millimeter pancake manual lens from Per Gear. Really interesting and fun lens. Definitely want to get into doing more unique lenses like this on the channel. If there are any out there that you want me to review, let me know in the comments below. Affiliate links for this lens down in the description below. Thank you guys so much if you go through those links, but as always guys, find the gear where it's cheapest for you. Thank you guys so much for coming to check out the video. And as always guys, I will see you in the next episode. Later.